Well, it seems like every week you hear that the price of oil has reached a record high. But there's a new source of surplus fuel in Lawrence, and get this, it's free. KUJH TV Sam Knowlton joins us from the newsroom. Sam, you found that some Lawrenceans are exploring uh, new opportunities in unexpected places. That's right, Gina. As climbing petroleum prices squeeze budgets across the nation, the demand for alternative fuels climbs too. But the lack of infrastructure and compatible vehicles leaves consumers with few options drive less or pay more. But the problem motivates some people to create their own alternatives, and one KU institution is fueling the fire. Twice a week, Michael Carmen heads into town to get fuel. But his destination is no filling station. It's a friendly downtown restaurant. He enters through the back to find the fuel waiting for him. Last night, it fried the chips. Carmen is one of a growing group of enthusiasts for whom old Greece glistens with new opportunities. Greece makes the biodiesel that keeps their engines running. And the fuel mileage that Carmen's engines boast shames even today's most efficient hybrid. The Volkswagen real nice, clean, quiet diesel engines that are they'll get 50 miles per gallon city highway driving average. Free fuel delights Carmen. But as he'll tell you, it takes some work to get from grease trap to gas tank. Just dump it in kind of carefully so it doesn't overflow. Carmen filters the oil through a four-stage system that he built in his garage. What results is clean used vegetable oil, which in the world of biodiesel is called SVO, straight vegetable oil. Diesel engines burn SVO without modification. But most owners prefer to install miles. a separate tank that keeps the oil Engage. warm and thin. This is an hour Carmen doesn't eight. know how much money he saves on fuel, but at 50 miles per gallon, he figures that even if the restaurant charged, he'd still save about $60 for every hour he devotes to biodiesel. But some restaurants are in no hurry to start charging. Carmen's pickups make commercial grease disposal obsolete. La Peria owner Alejandro Lula says the kitchen staff no longer uses the grease trap in the alley. Carmen collects all of the restaurant's used oil, a substantial quantity. And that's each week. Carmen likes SVO because it's a win-win situation for everyone. It's kind of fun because you're, uh, you're processing your own fuel, you know exactly what's going in your, in your tank, uh, and it was basically free or 50 cents a gallon, whatever, and, uh, and you're doing you know, the environment this, this huge favor. 16 gallons of waste oil per week may sound like a lot, but one Lawrence institution already has its sights set on processing 14,000 gallons per year, and they already have some ideas about where they might use it. KU's Transportation Research Institute now produces biodiesel from a campus cafeteria's waste oil. The Institute's founders, Associate Professor Susan Williams and graduate student Ilya DeBach, say that though currently production only amounts to a drop in the bucket of the campus-wide waste, they're developing a system much more technical than Carmen's. Research accuracy necessitates the more complicated process. Vegetable oil is just too inconsistent. There's consistency problems there, you know. Whereas with a regulated fuel that has a standard, you can actually try to ensure some level of consistency by which you could say that, uh, you know, this is biodiesel, and biodiesel means that it will hit this benchmark and this test, this benchmark and this test. The Transportation Research Institute produces a standardized form of biodiesel known as B100. B100 burns in unmodified diesel engines. KU's diesel vehicles currently use B5 fuel, but Williams and Tabak hope to use university vehicles as a laboratory for testing the efficiency and performance statistics of higher percentage fuels. And other colleagues can't wait for research to get started. Pollution scientist Dennis Lane says some aspects of biodiesel have never been proved. There's a perception that biodiesel will produce a cleaner exhaust uh, emission profile than, say, uh, number two regular diesel that we see in the pumps today. But actually, there's been very little research done in that particular area. Tabak and Williams hope that in a few years, the Institute will be able to produce as much as 7,000 gallons of B100, which could take the place of more than one-sixth of campus fuel consumption. But Williams says exact research must precede all the applications. All of those things require us to have a really good understanding of exactly what the fuel is, 
you know, the fuel properties uh, and how it's going to perform in the industry. If a lawnmower stops on campus, then that's, that's one thing. But if a bus stops on campus or all of the buses stop on campus, that's, that's another issue altogether. Like the exact emissions profile, Williams and Tabak hope to get hard facts for many unanswered aspects of biodiesel. But one thing does seem certain. When these questions are answered, restaurants will never again have to pay to get rid of their waste oil. These days, it's liquid gold. Whatever the outcome of KU's research, I suspect Carmen will be making his pickups like always.